inventory hit another yearly high. The last time inventory in the single family market was this high was back on August 10th of 2020. The condo market also hit another inventory high. Inventory high, inventory high, inventory high. I hope buyers are hearing this because it's not going to last for long. There are some great opportunities out there for buyers to just swoop in and get a great deal on, but you need to know where to look. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also gonna do a quick interest rate update, and we're gonna talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Show. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent and real estate investor that sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then know I'm here to help. Let's jump into the single family market stats. I know I said it last week, but anything good is worth repeating, right? Check out the continued spike in inventory. The inventory levels in the single family market hit 5,808 units. We now have 16.9% more homes on the market than just 28 days ago. And as I mentioned, last time we had this amount of the inventory on the market was on August 10th of 2020, when we last had 5,808 houses on the market. We should see about another month of inventory action increases until we start that fall drawdown. Hey, buyers, if you're looking to buy this fall, this should be like Bozart to your ears. We continue to see inventory levels grow over the previous years. We now have 1,371 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year, and now 402 more houses on the market when compared to 2022. New listings continue to decline, though, but continue to be over the levels of 2023 and 2022. We listed 1,214 single-family houses last week, which was 197 additional houses when compared to the same week back in 2023. New listing activity increased by 19.4%. That four-week rolling average, that's 1,066 units. Under agreements also came in higher, and we are spiking a bit. Maybe that's thanks to the lower interest rates? Who knows, but it's probably a pretty good guess. This week, we put 1,041 single-family houses under agreement. This is 160 units, or 18.2% more than the same leap last year. We put 881 houses under agreement. That four-week rolling average, that's 889 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 19.4%, while under agreements were up by 18.2%. The betting's new listing ratio is leveling out. The ratio of 77.8% as compared to the 90.1% that we saw this week last year, which that means that 78% of all the properties that came on the market just two weeks ago went under agreement last week. There were 625 single-family houses that closed us. We put an average sales price of $757,000 and a median sales price of $623,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 72 units or 13%. As there were 553 single-family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $769,000. Months of inventory. It's time we determine what type of market we're in zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. But the closer you get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market than it is. This week, months of inventory increased to 1.77 months from last week's 1.72 months. 1.77 months this week is compared to 1.42 months this week last year. So the gap between this year and last year grew to 0.35 months. In other words, the market improved for buyers. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We now have 3,144 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there is 16.9% more inventory in the market today than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. This was the highest that inventory has been since I started keeping records in the condo market. We now have 641 more units on the market today than today last year. 57 more than compared to the inventory levels of 2022. It's 77 more units than in 2021. There were 593 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 489 units. The 593 units listed was 91 units, or 18.1% uh, more than the 502 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. What's interesting is that we broke away from the 2022 trend line a little bit. It's just something for us to keep our eyes on in the coming weeks. This week, we put 446 units under agreement. The 446 condo sales was 38 units, or 9.3% more than the 408 condos that we put under agreement this week last year. And that four-week rolling average for under agreements, that's 356 units. So 18.1% more listings came on the market when compared to this week last year, while selling 9.3% more condos. Just like the single-family market, the condo pending to new listing ratio seems to be leveling off a bit. This week's pending to new listing ratio is 71.6%. This is compared to the 77 0.4% 
that we saw this same time last year. There were 240 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $659,000 and a median sales price of $515,000 the same week last year. There were 231 condos that sold for an average sales price of $619,000. So sales levels were up by 3.9%. Months of inventory increased to 2.36 months this week compared to 2.29 months that we recorded last week and we recorded 1.89 months of inventory levels this week last year. So the year over year inventory level spread increased to 0.48 months. And you're just gonna be a huge favor. Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference playing with that YouTube algorithm. And well, subscribing if you haven't done that and you're enjoying the content, and I truly appreciate you considering subscribing because that one doesn't hurt either. Time to talk about interest rates. Interest rates ticked up a little bit last week. Wait, what? Interest rates ticked up and the Fed funds rate went down? What gives? The federal funds rate and the mortgage rates are not tied to one another. Just because one goes down does not mean the other will in the same amount. Think about it this way for a second. If they were tied to one another, then interest rates wouldn't move in between Fed rate decisions. And this is because mortgage rates are tied to the 10-year treasury, not the federal funds rate. Let's first talk about consumer confidence, or maybe a lack thereof. The consumer's confidence slipped to 98.7 from last month's 105.6 ranking. This was the biggest one-month decline since August of 2021. To put this number in contrast, in February of 2020, last month before COVID, the consumer confidence was 132.6. On the expectations measure of reading below 80 is consistent with recessions. I just want to put these numbers into what I think is, at least my perspective, it's an election year. It almost becomes impossible to ignore all the negative narratives that come out of both sides. Also, the Fed did just cut 50 basis points. I feel like such a draconian cut probably would eat into people's confidence in the economy just a bit. By the way, in my opinion, 50 basis points was too much. They should have done 25. They're signaling to the world that things are worse than they really appear. But my big thing, I heard this stat the other day that we have seen another surge in inflation. 85% of all the times where inflation has gone above 6%. In other words, there's an 85% chance that we're gonna see a jump in inflation again. And I personally don't think the 50 basis point decrease is going to decrease those chances of that 85% chance where inflation just goes out of control all over again. And one more thing, keep in mind that these are the same people that told us for so long that the inflation that we were all living, it was all transitory and it was gonna be okay. I wanna talk about your own personal real estate needs. Again, it's chup chup. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house the next night or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along all my contact information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.